into the far post. Heading towards the back post, Miller gets there, stretches at full stretch to hold it and not concede a rebound. So set piece is the order of the day right now. And there's so much space on that back line for Miller. Clears it out, which I think Florida State starts such a hard, high line that she doesn't have that much traffic in front of her. Good clean hold, too, to stay with that one. Cassie Miller, uh, less than a goal a game. The NCAA Women's College Cup presented by Northwestern Mutual. Proud to be an official corporate partner of the NCAA. The set piece is really uh, sort of dominating what have been the closest chances to somebody scoring the game's first goal. Are some of the more marquee players sort of getting canceled out here in midfield so far? We haven't seen as much of Brynja's daughter for Florida State as we typically do, but give her time, Glenn. That's a player that doesn't get shut out very long. But you're seeing Schmidt with Germany, number 11 for Florida State, controlling the tempo. And I think for Virginia, the key right now is get that ball back into the feet of Kulaprico and Bryan. Yeah, time to counter the Florida State pressure with a bit of your own, and that's exactly what Virginia is doing here. Point Visto. Had to make a tackle via the ground, but it's another corner for Virginia. This is a very talented young freshman wearing number 23, and Colaprico to take the corner. She's had 43 career assists. Would love to get 44 right here. Colaprico. Brian is in there and timed it well. Punches the ground in anger because she felt she had a wonderful opportunity there to maybe put Virginia up. And you can see here, here she is on that back post. She's coming in with those orange boots and she knows she has a good look at this because she gets a wide open jump at it and it's just, you can see the anger. She knows she should put that one on frame. 16 caps for the full U.S. national team. And as you look at the Playmaker on the other side, Dagny Brynja's daughter. And, and that's my frustration with the zone marking. Not to belabor this point, <laughs> but I'm going to, is you don't get a body on that player to disrupt them when they're going up for that header. Well, you know, I, was I don't want to demo you, it here in the gonna, booth too, for gonna, you, Glenn. I was going to lead you into <laughs> man versus man defending and zonal marking uh, off corners, and then you just, a body on that player. you led yourself in beautifully. Here comes Florida State now. Colaprico. Doniak. And we notice her sort of posting up and certainly needing the opportunity to combine with her midfield. Reed with an unforced air. Quick throw in. And out of the middle. And if you're not paying attention on those transitions on throw ins, Florida State's going to get in behind you with that Campbell throw. They almost did just there. And Florida State now brings in uh, Florville's daughter and Marta Bukowski Matthews, who both were starters last year. So that shows you uh, we've got two starters from last season out of the first two off the bench. Yeah, and two starter, two bench players with 21 goals between them, by the way, as well. That's some nice depth. And a testament to their continued international presence. Iceland and English player, Bukowska Matthews, English player with nine goals on the season. She's got nine, Thorvald's daughter has 12. Thorvald's daughter last year was the primary striker. This year, that element is different, and her role was slightly different coming off the bench. Jamia Fields. Now, 
Now, does Florida State have to play differently with a different striker in there now with different qualities? Well, Thorville's got, daughter isn't going to... Back to that in the second field. Shot to the deflection. She's not going to have the pace, of course, of Shayna Williams, so she's not going to stretch the defense. They can play it a little bit tighter with her, so they're going to push up a little bit more, give that space to Morgan Stearns, their goalkeeper, in behind. So it's a bit more condensed, I think, when you don't have Williams in there. And that's the beauty of a fast player up top, stretching that defense. Well, you look at this game and you say to yourself, does the first goal in this game win you a national championship? Because you just kind of get that feel, Julie, so far. Well, and the success Florida State has had when they score early against Virginia this year, you can see the importance of that. And here's a look at this one here. Your Danu up against Fields. Yeah, that's a big matchup out wide. A lot of responsibility for Tina Iordano. Three goals and assists for her from Upper Brookfield, New York. To call to action for Jimmy V to donate to the V Foundation for Cancer Research, log on to www.jimmyv.org or call 1 800 for Jimmy V. And so much recognition this week, Jimmy Valvano. Jimmy V Week for Cancer Research. So Iordano will get looked at here, obviously. She's a left back, but I'll tell you what, she's scored some big goals this year for Virginia as well. Protocol here with the... Uh... They've got 10 players on this Virginia team with four or more goals. Yeah. And as you mentioned before, I think it's now 17 goals from that back line. G. Guerrero yesterday had a conversation with him, the Texas A&M coach. He said the toughest thing about playing Virginia is you have to deal with that possession game that they have and that they're spining the team. Sonic, Colaprico, Brian, Doniak, just so good. And I think the challenge for them in this new system with Doniak playing high in that target role, She's used to having another forward next to her, and now she's having to lead that line and Into really game, has to hold the ball. We haven't Number seen 20, her hold Campbell it as well as I think she can so that it allows other players to get forward. Campbell Millar now on for Virginia. One back by Florida State and then a good recovery. From number 16, Emily Sonic. He was scored in two consecutive games for Virginia. Sonnet not afraid to play out of the back. We've seen this a lot of times. She's so good on the ball, converted midfielder, and chasing back to recover that one. Here's why that loss of possession is dangerous, yeah. because and it they, leads to this from it. Megan Campbell. They know it's so dangerous to give up those throw-ins in these situations. It's giving up a set piece. Replacing number 11, Isabella. It comes, punched out. Is there a second ball? Virginia's there first. Cassie Miller stands on it for Florida State. through passing. Megan Cox is in now, ball driven into the box. Both teams have made some changes. Cola Prico. Virginia with good extensive possession here. It's just over hit. Brynja's daughter back defending, wins it. Fields became that deep target. And Virginia deals with it well. Jamia Fields. Cola Prico again breaks the playoff. Right now, it, some of the changes now, maybe... Few more unforced errors here with 
fresh players coming on. Campbell. Thorvald's daughter doing the work down the line here. And went out of play, it will be a throw in for Florida State. Again, Julie, you know, you go into games say, we don't want to concede corners or set pieces. Now you got to add throw ins. I know. Whatever you do, don't let the ball go yeah. over the line in your defensive third. It's a lot to think about. And here it is. Campbell hoists it into the box. Brynja's daughter, Fields, will get a shot off its wide. Didn't make good contact. Goal kicked Virginia. Next Sunday, 4 o'clock, the LA Tech Bulldogs will take on Rakeem Christmas in Syracuse. Then we move on to UNC Wilmington squaring off against Louisville in their big front court. The Hardy Hoops doubleheader. It's next Sunday, December 14th at 4 on ESPNU, the home court of College Hoops. Iridanu back in, so that's good news. They must have checked out okay. Looks like they were doing the concussion look. Polaprico now. Fights off the challenge from Fields. Not sure why that was called a foul, but it is by referee Josh Wilkins. Looks like she just uh, took the contact wonderfully while in possession. Uh, see, see I, I just think it makes the game too choppy. I say you don't call that. Both of them are going for it. There's nothing to that. It's constant restarts, stopping the play. Let them play. And the obvious next question is, constant restarts benefits who? Florida State, I think. They want it choppy. They know that Virginia gets in that rhythm and they start humming. Been a bit of an ebb and flow here today. The ebb and the flow right now to Florida State. Prico called off it by her very talented goalkeeper, Morgan Stearns, a sophomore from San Antonio, Texas, conceding less than a goal a game. And you know, the interesting adjustment Florida State commented on earlier for this entire season, Dagny, Brenya's daughter, when you say, what's been the difference this year? You've always been dominant. Could you actually get over the hump and get that title? And she says, we've been winning games emphatically. Right, not just 1-0, we've been dominating games. And I think a lot of that, she said, had to do with the fact that we changed our style. We were such a possession team. We wanted to play pretty. But all of a sudden, we started learning. we got to be direct at times. we got to be tougher at times. So they brought in that balanced attack, yeah, which is hard to do for a team that likes to play on the ground. She mentioned the word pressing, too. We press a little bit more. Felt last year in the... NCAA final that, like you said, it's a lot of good possession that yielded few chances. And Virginia going to make another change. Hazelrig, uh, Olivia Hazelrig is only a freshman. Eve Swanson mentioned that she might get a run here today. Schaffer comes out. Virginia beat High Point 8-0, Rutgers 3-0, Kentucky 7-0, and then upset UCLA at UCLA. Not easy to do the way that team was playing. Knocked out the defending national champions in the quarterfinals and then in the semis got past Texas a and through the one. Bring his daughter, Campbell now. With substitutes coming on, the energy of the game changing in some different types of ways.
Florida State got by South Alabama 5-0, Northeastern 3-0, Central Florida 1-0, South Carolina 5-0. Again, they have scored 16 goals, have not conceded one in the NCAA tournament. Quick turnaround from Friday night semifinals. Florida State had the late one. Turning in a little bit uh, to a kind of grinding out there. Little choppy, little choppy. Right, Virginia gets out here at halftime tied at zero. It's something they haven't done against Florida State because they conceded goals that eventually were game winners in the first half and in I, their first two meetings. And I, I guarantee you, Steve Swanson in that locker room at halftime is saying, patience. Right, as he said last night, you don't want to just scarf down the food. You got to take each bite slowly and enjoy it. He's going to say, spin out of it sometimes. Keep the ball. Find the seam. Because those seams will open up if you can hold it. And right now, this is the ball you're getting instead. A little bit panicked. Not their typical rhythm style. And if you're Mark Corian, you say continue to be disruptive. Play for those set pieces. And But he's going to want their, this group to hold the ball as well. I was about to say big moments don't come along that often in sports, but these teams have been consistently to the NCAA College Cups. Virginia trying to play out of the back now. Stearns. Stoner actually uh, playing a little bit deeper here now. With Virginia in possession, showing a lot of respect here for the technical ability of the Cavaliers. They get it out wide. Megan Cox for Virginia. Been trying to turn the corner down here. And lost a possession. Yeah, let's not forget the coverage of the NCAA championships continues with the men's college cup semifinals this coming Friday, December 12th, 7.30 Eastern on ESPNU. Go to NCAA Men's College Cup, log on to NCAA.com. All kinds of great information there. The official online home for all 89 NCAA championships. Baltimore County against Virginia. And Providence UCLA. Great matchups in Cary, North Carolina. And what a good opportunity right there for Florida State to capitalize on the center back getting forward. She loses the ball, big gap, and they just can't connect. Millar now. That's a free kick. You can hear it up here, and we're up high. The Morgan Bryan brought down Virginia with a wonderful opportunity here. They got. We tick down towards a minute here. Plenty of time to get this set up. There is no stoppage time. And try to produce something special here. Look at all the space in here. And this is where Cassie Miller is just going to dominate. But they're clearing that out. If they can whip that right at about the eight yard line, what a dangerous ball that is. A little bit too far from Miller. Tons of room for Virginia. Brian faints a run to the near post. It takes a deflection. It'll be a corner. Less than a minute left here. Ah, you just can't waste those opportunities in a game like this. What a good look. So close in. Well, the Preco now, another chance. Box is loaded up for Virginia. To the back post. Campbell got ahead on it. Can they get turned to get it into the box? Less than 30 seconds here in the first half. It comes in towards the back post. And good dependable handling there from Cassie Miller. Stay with us at halftime. We analyze the U.S. Women's National Team draw. ESPNW College Cup snapshots. There's some 
great ones around this College Cup weekend. Highlights and stats as well. That'll do it here in the first half. Not much between these two teams. 0-0. As both Florida State and Virginia looking for a national title. Julie, your thoughts on the first half? I think uh, Swanson is probably going to mention what we talked about with the possession, and I think for Florida State, they got a little more confidence in that second part of the first half. Can they carry that momentum forward and keep pressing Virginia because they're having a hard time getting out of their back third when they do that? Shayna Williams, could she play a big part of this in the second half for Florida State? She was taken out and rested. Virginia is in a place they haven't been against Florida State here, tied at zero at half. And that's good news because they've given up those two early goals that have, as we said earlier, put them on their heels. Swanson has talked about how they scored early in both those losses, Florida State did, and then dumped the ball and pressed, dumped the ball and pressed, and it was so hard for Virginia to get out of even their back third. Two midfields kind of canceled each other out here yeah, in the first and that's, half. That's going to be where the battle, I think, is won in that second half. The Colapricos and Bryans, can they get more of it than your Dagny Brynjus daughters and Schmidt? That's a great chess match to watch. And we haven't seen a lot of the playmaking from those two playmakers here today because, in fact, we've seen them both doing a lot of defensive work. And with Virginia switching their lineup into that 4-5-1, there's just a cluster of people in that midfield. Five and five on both sides. Down to Virginia head coach Steve Swanson. Thank you very much for joining us, Steve. How about your initial thoughts here on the first half? Well, I thought we did some good things there, especially defensively to limit their chances, but, you know, we're not getting as much penetration as we need to. Um, you know, I think we're, the midfield's kind of neutralized a little bit, but uh, we've got to, you know, we've got to work our way slowly up the field. Sometimes we're going too fast. We're playing it into our striker up top, but we don't have any help around her, and, and uh, we're, we're trying to go for it too quick. So just got to be a little more patient, I think, but still with the idea of, of getting players forward so we can get some chances. Steve, best of luck to you in the second half. Okay. We'll let you get to work in your locker room. Thanks very much. Steve Swanson, one of the great college coaches. Coming up, we'll break down yesterday's Women's World Cup draw with former World Cup winner Julie Foudy. You're watching the 2014 Women's College Cup presented by Northwestern Mutual. 45 minutes away from a potential national champion. We will crown a new one here today. Glenn Davis alongside Julie Foudy. Uh, Two playmakers in the first half. We built them up, Dagny Brynjus' daughter and also Morgan Bryan of Virginia. Both of them resigned to more defensive roles. They're doing a lot of chasing. They've been neutralized a little bit by how many in the middle, and I think that's the key for both target forwards. If it's Shayna Williams for Florida State, Doniak for Virginia, how can they hold the ball to allow time for those midfielders to get involved? Because both teams a little bit choppy, missing the rhythm they want to see to try and develop something to get, uh, to get a goal. All right, let's take a look at first half highlights here in a game that... Uh, Two ships butting heads in the night here. And and really the only chance outside of set pieces from the run of play for Virginia is this one. Your, your Donny, excuse me, to Doniak, but it's cleared by Florida State, but really not much in the way of chances for Virginia. And this one for Florida State off a set piece. Cleared off the line originally by Morgan. And you're gonna see Sonnet here, another set piece for Virginia. She gets in behind. Florida State plays a high line. No one tracks her. She almost gets in, but Cassie Miller's been really clean and solid today for Florida State. Game defined by sets pieces. Only six shots between the two teams. Nine corners in this one. That could be the difference today. We'll take a break. Coming up, we'll look at some of the images of the 2014 Women's College Cup. You're watching the 2014 Women's College Cup presented by Northwestern Mutual Virginia and Florida State tied at zero here. 45 minutes separates them from a national championship. We bring in Florida State University head coach Mark Recoring. Mark, take us into your locker room. What did you tell your team at halftime? Oh, I uh, mentioned to them that I think both teams in the second half are probably going to be focusing on trying to keep the ball a little bit more, uh, make sure that uh, we have possession and uh, not just uh, lumping the ball forward. I thought in the first half we didn't do as good of a job keeping it when the pressure wasn't great. Any adjustments for that second half, Coach? 
There's no personnel adjustments, no tactical adjustments other than we want to keep the ball. Mark, thank you very much I for guess, your time. You. And best of luck to Mark Kikorian and Florida State. Second half started here, Virginia in the navy blue. Florida State in the white. Again, your referee is Josh Wilkins. Ben Davis alongside Julie Fatty. Hope you're enjoying the NCAA Women's College Cup here in Boca Raton, Florida. Two programs looking to win their first national championship in women's soccer. Looking like Virginia starting again for this second half in that 4-5-1. So still only the one forward in Doniak. Typically Virginia play dance. in a 4-4-2 throughout the season. Again, trying to nullify that midfield for Florida State. Virginia on the attack. Reed pushes it wide. Now back on the ball. Megan Reed. And the pressure from Pickett. Now Steve Swanson made the switch to tighten things up in midfield a little bit. Is there a point where he takes some risk and maybe changes his system here today, Drew? I think they're going to see how Doniak holds up the ball for them if she can play as that target role. This is a system they're not familiar with. They haven't played much in it, but he still felt confident enough because it gives them more options in that midfield. But I think they have to do a better job of getting into different angles and seams to get support on the ball because Florida State is so good at putting immediate pressure on defensively. So they may go back to that 4-4-2. I, I think they could even go to a 3-5-2. There's Virginia now, top of the box. A left-footed shot is blocked. Getting in front of that is Kirsten Crowley, who saved one off the line against Stanford. Keep that shutout streak going. Florida State has not been scored on in 585 minutes. It was remarkable in itself. Two players collide. Jamia Fields now for FSU. No foul call after some contact there with Iordano. Jana Williams back up front now for Florida State. Good sign for Florida State, though, if they can get Jamia Fields active early. She didn't even need, need any help because Virginia took out <laughs> each other. And this is the play in. I think that's a foul. She does. There was no call on that one. Comes in and just get a little bit of a clip there. The freshman Coit Visto off the throw. Fields couldn't control it. Do you see a little lack of sharpness here today based on the fact that quick turnaround with the semifinals just this past it, Friday? Yeah, it looks like it's a little bit of fatigue. Those heavy legs, you're not seeing the burst from fields that you saw in that last game. And that's not surprising given she was up and down that flank so much in that first game. The women's college game, so condensed, so many games in a short amount of time. Virginia had to go to UCLA, fly back across the country. Flew into Atlanta, then up to Dulles. Bus ride to Charlottesville, Virginia. All the while, you're doing your studies. Exams next week. A lot going on. Pick it, flicks it in towards the box. Bring your starter. Brinia's daughter's header for Shayna Williams. And Virginia, for the moment, clear their lines a little bit. Golf Florida State right now, Isabella Schmidt, junior from Germany. Victorian, the head coach of Florida State, says she has a big future with the German national team if she wants it. Here she is on the ball with the outside of her foot towards the top of the box. Virginia step up defensively. Ratcliffe now. Only has one target in front of her, and that's Doniak. 
and that's a perfect example. Spin out, hold the ball, forcing things when they shouldn't be forced. Visto, now Michaela Hahn. Picks her head up, knocks it back. Very talented center back, Kristen Grubko. 